You're listening to pre Cana with the Pope, a podcast aimed at restoring confidence in marriage and family life. Another episode of Pre Cana with the Pope. This is episode ninety six. Watch us be wrong. Watch us be wrong. We clearly, we clearly have been tracking. But we're back, and we're what is it? This is episode ninety six. Everyone, wow, that's exciting. All right, um, we're your hosts. We should ex- we should for the new people. No, okay. we're your hosts. Renzo and Monica Ortega. You can't see our faces because we, remember we said, I think we said it a while ago. We we're like, we're going to have new things. We're going to YouTube and we're going to have one no, day, guys, one day. Guys, we record late at night. We are not showering again. We may just embrace that though Ugh. and just stop. Well, you're look, you look great. No, you do. I do not. I what part, tired. what part of you doesn't look great? This, the hair. That's my favorite part. <laughs> the part you're pointing to my favorites. Oh my goodness. Well, you have a nice shiner on your eye from jujitsu too. I feel like my vest is very, should I take my vest off? It's Yes. That's the kind of episode we're having. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. My vest is making a lot of noise. It's also cold. I'm not taking any of this out. So no, this is not a shiner. This is a, did you call it that? I did call it a shiner. It's a mat burn. It's a, no, it's a gi burn. It's a gi burn. Someone put their shoulder on my face and I didn't like it. So I shoved my face in their shoulder. To get it out of there. Did you teach them a lesson? No, my face is clearly. My face learned that I don't care about it. Because I just I did it in the evening too. I was just putting my head in. I don't know. It'll look good in a suit tomorrow at work. Oh gosh. That's no. You're gonna put makeup on me. We are oh, we not need the to, same skin tone. <laughs> we have to we need to go to Jamie's house. Why? Because she's browner. She's browner than you <laughs> you are my porcelain princess <laughs> Gosh, you're so weird that's insulting it was meant to be <laughs> <laughs> no so uh yes yeah, hopefully it looks well we'll see we'll see what sleep does sleep is a wonder drug it'll fix my face um but so today in today's episode we are going to ignore the poll that we put out there <laughs> Every, we, we polled and people wanted us Thanks, to banter. Instagram they followed. wanted witty banter and let it flow. What'd you say? I oh, said freestyle. Freestyle. She, you I wanted freestyle I rap. I didn't suggest and I haven't freestyled witty. since high school. <laughs> Drop a beat, Monica. No. Drop a beat. Well, here's a little bit of it if you guys liked it. If you guys like our banter. But so besides the witty banter, we are... It was very witty. Um, we are going to react to another video. So the reason I think this is an important video to react to is because I don't want to just rehash the same episode we did. I don't know what episode it was. It's I think it's like 11, a yeah. long time ago, because we're almost at 100. Um, but I thought, so this, I feel like this concept was very uh, formative mm-hmm. and allowed us to have good conversations. So you and formative I- Formative in our, in our relationship. True, yeah. I don't know. How, how else would it be formative? Not like in the podcast. Oh, no. A lot no, of no. people liked it, though. Anyways, okay. Can you go what? Ahead? So the – because, like, you and I had, a like, a brief discussion on Saturday. Yeah. Saturday. And it was just – it's just – and you and I, well, then, then we we had a discussion on Saturday, and then we had a debrief on Sunday. We don't <laughs> call it these things as they're happening. <laughs> we just talk. But – um, and you, you pointed out that you and I have grown so much in our communication. Yes. Because the – what we had discussed – The if topic – Right. Okay. Or even just, and even just the way we went about it. If it had been done earlier in our marriage, it would have absolutely been a fight. Yep. Somebody feelings would have been hurt. I probably would have cried, but it didn't, none of that happened. No. Yeah. It was, I think like topic and like the timing of the conversation and things like that, it would have been, it would not have gone as well had we not been actively working on our communication strategies, but also to the point that like, we didn't realize until we debriefed on Sunday, but I had the realization that I was like, 
hey, that conversation actually went really well. And in the past, it would not have. Mm -hmm. And like, so now I feel like because we did a lot of like active working on our communication strategies, that it didn't feel like we were practicing. Mm -hmm. We were actually like doing the Mm -hmm. good conversation. Well, and then I pointed out, um, because I think it's a both and, like I think one thing that is more true now in our marriage than it was earlier is that we both believe the other truly loves mm-hmm. us. Sorry, I don't know how to word it without mm-hmm. being weird. But like, all right, I truly believe you love me regardless of how like I might be feeling or like, like I, I truly just believe you love me. Like all about me, everything. Yeah. Like there's no things I have to do to make you love me. I don't put up with certain things. Right. Yeah. Whereas, and and so that's the foundation that we're able to communicate on. So like whatever you're saying, I'm receiving, though I might get upset about it. I'm, I know that you love me. Whereas I don't think that was as true earlier in our marriage. We would say it. Oh, I know. No, you don't. Like you still feel like you have to, you know, you still have to. Earn it or prove it. What's the thing that Brene Brown says? The, um. Oh, not like instead of coping strategies, not defense mechanism. Like what's the other word? Mm, I don't know. Not shield. Protection? Self protection. Sorry, there you go. Yes. Self protection. Um, like I don't feel like I have to self protect mm-hmm. um in order to to not let you into certain areas. Cause I feel like that that was very true um in early marriage, where it's mm-hmm. like it's not anymore. So like that also allows a lot of freedom in conversation, but then how we communicate also how like it's a lot because that's the foundation how we communicate has been allowed to change without us getting offended that the other's pointing out like hey can you say this this way this time yeah 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 and i think yeah it just was it was just a good productive conversation on a hard topic and i'm glad did you take minutes i'm kidding i'm kidding we I don't take driving we don't take minutes we don't say no no of the debrief oh of the debrief no. We don't take minutes at our meetings. Don't do that either. Nope. Formal. Yeah. Formal in the calendar meeting debrief. No. Um, but one of the things that we have learned about ourselves and has influenced our communication strategies, our communication, and also just like a better, again, it has learning this has allowed us to trust one another more deeply. Um, so we kind of want to revisit something that we had talked about at the beginning of the podcast back in like possibly even single digits, but definitely before t- episode 20. Um, yeah. Bring it up again. Cause our poll, our second poll did say they like communication. They did. They did so, say they like it. Here we so, are. so the, the video we're going to, um, react to is from a channel called therapy in a nutshell. I, I feel bad. I didn't do enough research in the last 30 seconds to remember the therapist's name. She's actually very, very good. And I'll put her name in the show notes because I'm a terrible, terrible person, terrible, terrible person. <laughs> and she doesn't introduce herself at the beginning of the video either. So oh, come on, come on. We'll maybe, I'll, maybe I'll find around. her name. I don't see oh, it. her name is Emma McAdam. Look at that. YouTube, YouTube in the. Um, but yeah, um, I, I appreciate her, her expertise, her yes. advice. And yeah, so her stuff's really good. Um, in general, her her I would say her therapy things are good. What thing is important to point out is she's not Catholic, she's not Christian, and I think we as Catholic Christians need to get over that if we're afraid to go to sources that aren't Catholic Christian. Because like truth is truth. So if something is true, it doesn't matter the source that it comes from, mm-hmm. if it's if it's a true thing. So uh, because God is truth. Yep. Okay. Correct. All, it's all truth. That is true. Um so so I you know, for this, I think this is true. I think this is very helpful. Um, it's not anything counter or against anything, any aspect of our faith. This is more about like, this is more human formation and how we interact with one another. Um, so just, just to keep that in mind, if you go to the channel and she, I don't, I haven't seen anything negative, but I in case anything pops up, she that ends is- up saying like, this is how you talk to your spouse about birth control. Or like, what did Renzo and Monica send me to? We, not that <laughs> go to the next video, yep. but, um, <laughs> So today, ask culture and guess culture. All right. So let's, let's listen. Are you an asker or a guesser? 
I saw this story on Facebook that perfectly illustrates this crucial communication style that no one is talking about. But if you did know about it, it could be life changing. So knowing the difference could save your relationships. So let's start with the story, right? The husband says, we live in a small two bedroom apartment in New York City. People like to visit here and they don't generally want to pay for a hotel. We understand this. However, we also don't want people staying with us who we don't know or we don't like. My wife received the following email. Is there a chance that I could stay with you and Jeff for a portion of that time? I'd be using the subway the whole time and I'd be gone from 10 to 10 probably every day. So I'd be out of your way most of the time. Let me know if this might be a possibility. Your choice on the dates. Thanks for your help. I hope this works out so we can see each other. Okay, first, I don't even know this woman. I've never even spoken with her. My wife doesn't really like her, but she's one of those people who just won't go away. To complicate things further, my wife is one of those people who doesn't really like to say no or to turn away people from her past. So I'm sure this woman will be following us wherever we go. Further, it really annoys me when people just invite themselves over or present the possibility of you accommodating them. This is something I strive never to do. If anything, I might test the waters by mentioning I'll be in town and see if an offer comes my way. But suggesting that you should allow me to stay in your apartment with you and your significant other, whom I have not met, seems borderline, if not downright, rude presumptuous, definitely. Now, I doubt this will be the last time this happens, so we need a final solution. The only thing I've thought of so far are, number one, our apartment has a weird key, true, and we haven't been able to get it duplicated, somewhat true. We need our keys, true, sorry. Number two, keep it vague. Sorry, that isn't going to work for us. Seems like a pretty good solution, but A, it's still pretty awkward to say to someone, especially since I wouldn't put it beyond this woman to inquire further. Why though? Why can't I stay? And B, it'll be hard to get my wife to say this to her. Have you had a similar experience? What would you do in this sort of situation? So let's just, I want to comment on the story. <laughs> so, and this is part of the, like, well, I'm sure she'll get more into it in the video, but that seems like such a weird scenario to me <laughs> in that, like, just tell them you don't want them to come. <laughs> That's all I'm like, no, I don't want you in my house. And this is why <laughs> we are different humans because that response right there makes my throat bubble oh and my, my belly I make it do a somersault. Like, oh, you can't just say that to somebody. That's wow. rude and yeah. uncomfortable. And you're like, yeah, but so is them having, having them in our house. <laughs> so, and, and she's going to explain it later. Like, so, um, guessers and askers. So people who ask are very direct. Guessers kind of aren't. <laughs> just, they're just, I'm very direct in this. They're just not direct. They play games. <laughs> sorry. I'm so Quit sorry. Playing games with my heart. But it's just, it's so interesting because I feel like this is, uh, this could be a scenario that couples find themselves in and not even, not even that like they're one's an asker, one's a guesser. It could mm -hmm. be like they're both guessers, they're yeah. both askers, yep. and just how we go about things needs to be, yeah, understood. Like why my Im my impulse of just be rude. Not, see, that's not my impulse. It's not just be rude. It's let's be direct because let's that's how you get your needs met. Um, I feel like it, I feel like it's a good impulse, but then it can also be bad at other times. Why are you laughing? Because <laughs> that's not necessarily how you get all your needs met by being direct. <laughs> get what I want. Some, <laughs> Sorry, no. <laughs> some people might not want you around. Um, well, it's funny that you think that the scenario is odd because I feel like there's been so many times where I'm like, here's a situation. So-and-so is asking this. What do I say? Because. Oh, that used to be an argument. That used to be an argument. And now you just answer my question because you realize that I have a hard time formulating my words. So you often will like give me the answer and then I'll put it in my own words, I, but it still has your answer in it. It's funny because <laughs> I never, I, there was a point in our marriage where you would ask me for advice, like how should I address this? And I thought you would say exactly what I was saying. 
And then I'd be confused why it was still coming up as an issue. Mm-hmm. And so I realized like, you're not saying what I'm saying. Yep. And I read your text. I was like, that's not, that's, that's like not a, what I said. It's like a third of what I said. <laughs> you're still leaving doors open. But now I feel like there's a good, I think you've learned, you've embraced adapting it into your own words, but then still setting boundaries. The clear boundary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Let's continue. All the answers this person got, they could basically be summarized into two categories. This is a perfect example of ask culture versus guess culture. So the first group said, why can't you just say no? Just say no. Just tell her no. You can even use the gentle Miss Manners approach. No, I'm afraid that won't be possible. And if she asks you why... Because it simply isn't possible. Another responder said, this woman isn't even demanding to stay or assuming she can say, she's asking. You need to say no. Someone else said, she's not being rude at the moment. She's just asking. Someone else said, I don't think it's necessarily rude that she asked, but it also isn't rude if you say no. And another person said, you are allowed to say no without offering an explanation, you know. So all of these answers These are ask culture. In some families, you grow up with the message, it can't hurt to ask, but you might get no for an answer. That's okay. Now, the messaging to this couple from the ask culture folks was, just be direct. If she gets offended, that's her issue. Don't worry about it. In ask culture, you're more likely to be clear and straightforward, but you're also more likely to be perceived as presumptuous That never happens, does it? Never. See? You would tell me directly, right? (laughs) (laughs) I would not. I liked, I liked the, I feel like where I have grown is the situation that she mentioned of that. It's not rude that she asked. She was just asking. You're allowed to say no. And, um, oh gosh, what did she say? But I was like, yeah, that's kind of where I fall in that. Like, like, I don't think it was an awkward ask. Like if we were traveling, somewhere and we knew somebody that lived there like we knew them Mm -hmm. i might ask so we could save money you know like Mm -hmm. i don't think that that's totally rude for or presumptuous of the person to ask i think that's a fair ask and then it's fair for us to say no Mm -hmm. um but i think it's like in how that's delivered that can be sure dicey yeah Yeah. no i agree um but like this is in in my family, and I and I you you wonder how much of it is like culturally based mm-hmm. and like what you grew up with, nature, or how much of it's just like yeah. personality. Because like I think even with our kids, actually I think they're all pretty direct. Are they they're all? I think they're I think they're pretty direct. The times where I get frustrated when they're not direct is they'll be like, "Mommy, my uh, my lunchbox is in the trunk." was one of the things that happened today on the way home. And it's like, okay, what do you actually want? Mm. Well, I'm hungry and I want a snack. Like, gotcha, okay, gotcha. so then just say, I'd like snack. Or the times where they're like, hey, they got a tree. And I'm like, okay, yeah, fact. <laughs> it's like, Is there an issue? Well, I would like dessert. Well, then you could just say, I would like a treat instead yeah. of telling me about somebody else's scenario that you feel like is unfair. How about mm-hmm. you just come out and ask what you would like? Yeah. Um, so I think sometimes it, it seeps in, but it's funny, me as the- You're making them- <laughs> Me as the guest culture person, and we haven't gotten to that description yet, but I'm trying to force them to be more ass culture. That's funny. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, I definitely grew up in my family, and I, I've shared a few times here, like, we're just, we were just very loud and very- open about everything very direct though so but it's funny because my dad though is not direct and it drives me nuts and we fight about uh all the time like so like that's true he's not ask culture he beats around the bush oh my goodness he like takes three laps and then stops and waits (laughs) to see if you've noticed that he's still walking like it's it's so insane to me that he won't and and i've like actively gotten into arguments as an adult of like what are you asking me i was like like it'll be something of like the boys they they swim, right? What? They swim. Okay. Would they swim with me? <laughs> okay. Yes, maybe. I'll take him to the pool. Okay. Next week. What do you what do you want? <laughs> can I take him to the pool next week at three? Yes. Okay. You can have like he's just like slowly like let me get like, are you okay with me saying a thing? Yeah. 
and it drives me nuts. It does. But your mom, you and your mom, we're so direct. Are very direct. Yes. And that's been an interesting. I mean, it's in our marriage. It's been something to learn, but also like, and I don't think we talked about this the first time we talked about this this topic, but like in learning more about your mom, I feel like she and I have a better relationship because. I understand that she's just more direct and she uses uh-huh. less words and yes. like isn't always flowery and just mm-hmm. tells me and I'm like, okay, but that's like, that's her and it's not her being like rude or standoffish or what have you. And that I should just be clear with her and upfront with her Interesting. when I need something. <laughs> it's funny because I feel like if people heard the way my mom and I talk to each other, they'd think oh. that we are just so rude to each other, but like that's how we communicate. And like we are very direct and upfront, and there's no like, I don't know. You can't there's pl- no ill feelings. No, like it's no. Just, it just is. You just say. Well, and I guess that's part of what was hard for us in our marriage is that like I would be direct about a thing, and you'd think that I felt extra things. Yes. And I was like, no, I just this is well because my family was so not that way. So it's mm-hmm. like if they ever did say something, it was because it was such a big deal. Mm-hmm. So when you would say things, I was like. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. All these things are such big deals to you that you're That's willing to say it everything. out loud <laughs> to my face. That's so wild. What? Yeah. And I feel like that's like I was saying earlier, like the underlying, like we knew we loved each other and that's why we got married. Is it? Is it? Yes. It's because of my face. <laughs> um, no. So we got married. We love each other. And then you still have other things happening that, make you question like, well, like what's the conditions that yes. love is still possible yes. here? Do you still, are you sure you still love me? Cause what you said was, didn't Rude. feel lovely. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to play the whole video. So I'm going to skip ahead to try to find the guest culture. The woman asking to stay seems to be from ask culture and the husband and wife both seem to be from guest culture. So here's what the other half of commenters were saying. Just say that it isn't a good time right now and that you're sorry. Or offer some kind of excuse. Like, why not say something like, our apartment is not set up to have guests. Or tell her you'll be out of town. Or say, sorry, it's not possible. And if she asks why, say, I can't go into it. It's too embarrassing. It's one of those random life in New York City things. Someone else said, does she have your phone number? Has your wife corresponded by email with her recently? Because it would be unfortunate if the only way she had to contact you was an email address that your wife no longer uses. Hint, hint. Right? Their their message is like, just ghost her. Just ignore her. Right? Just cut her off and try not to think about it. All right? And someone else said this, you're not the one who's being rude. She is. Boom, right there. She's the one who's being rude for asking. This is you know what? I feel like so this guest culture is so rude when they don't ask you the thing, and they like kind of play like. And this is not you. You don't do this anymore. (laughs) Anymore. Anymore. But like I like if someone were to were to like so in the same scenario, if someone is instead of asking directly, can I stay at your house or can I see you this weekend? Yep. If they're just like. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, yeah. Are you free? But like they're not asking like are you like there's uh, not maybe are you free? No, it's mostly like what are, are you Are up you to free this is weekend? too direct. Yeah. It's more of like, yeah, like what are you doing this weekend? And then just leave it at that and like are you asking me because you want to know my schedule or like are you asking because you want to hang out? Are you in town? Yeah. But there's no direct Are you ask. asking just to know what I'm up to? And there's no direct ask. Yeah. And that's just dry. I feel like that's rude because it's not clear. And Brene Brown says clear is kind, right? She does. Yes. And it's not kind to just be like, let me put feelers out there. Like if you want to see it's if like you want testing to hang out. waters. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like it and maybe I'm this is like me going too deep into guest culture. Maybe it's not thought like this. But it to me it comes off as like you're afraid of what the answer might be. So therefore I'm gonna just slowly put things out there and then I never actually make the ask. So it's not bad if I'm never rejected. Hmm. Maybe, like a fear of rejection. Right. Maybe. But maybe maybe that's not a thing. Maybe it's just like, no, it's rude to ask. And that's that's what you think. I don't know. But at least it comes off to me as rude. I can see that. I think it's a mix. I think it depends on the scenario. I think there's definitely times where I've 
test of the waters because I'm afraid to put myself out there and be embarrassed mm. by a rejection or like I cl- like I was just so off the off the mark that like it would be embarrassing like to ask and it be a clear opposite answer of what I was hoping for. Mm-hmm. Um, I think sometimes it is to not feel like I'm putting too much pressure on you. Like you're allowed to say no. So like, oh yeah, because you explained, you know, you're really busy that weekend. So it's totally fine that I'm, you, you can't have us over. That's, you know, and to not put the, to not put the embarrassment on you, mm-hmm. on the other person that I'm wanting to ask something of, those would be my, mm-hmm. my guest culture replies to your yeah comment. of guest culture their advice was to use a subtle indirect way to tell her no without hurting her feelings they essentially said that it was rude of this woman to ask so directly and it would be rude of you to answer her directly so find some roundabout way to gently hint to her that it won't work out and just keep praying that she disappears so that you don't have to be rude Now, in guest culture, you try to put out feelers because you don't want to make someone uncomfortable by asking directly. That's what you just said. You may hint. We haven't watched this video since episode 11. (laughs) At a request or subtly suggest something and then only ask directly if you're pretty sure the answer will be yes. In guest culture, you rely on shared cultural norms. So... For example, in Greece, it's rude to leave food on your plate. It signals that you didn't like it. But in China, it's rude to clear your plate because it sends the message that there wasn't enough Listen, food offered. I would not do well so in the, China. <laughs> subtleties of culture allow for people to show respect and consideration for each other. But this can lead to confusion for outsiders or people who aren't sure what the cultural norms are. Now, askers may hate this, but the reality is a huge amount of communication is nonverbal and a huge amount of understanding is cultural. Like that is the reality of life. So, for example, um, coming in with a disagreement. Here. No, I really no, I, I agree with everything she's saying. I yeah, that, even the fact that I hate it. <laughs> no, and I think it, it's beneficial for. Yes. So I forgot what show I was watching. I don't know. But like the understanding cultural differences between across cultures is important, not like within families, but like more country to country. That's Mm -hmm. super important to know. Uh, And I think I would, I'm uh, emotionally astute enough to not just come in in a different country and assume that it's run the same way Mm -hmm. and like be blind Mm -hmm. enough to that. Um, yeah, that would just be silly. Mm-hmm. Because like I, I – and but then also I, I wonder if it's my ADHD though because I feel like I'm I'm very ass culture until I'm in a new scenario or mm-hmm. new situation and I kind of just – I I don't know if I become a guesser but I kind of just stay quiet and don't voice my opinion unless someone gives me permission to do that. Yeah. So like when – like at, at work – you're kind of like evaluating the – Yeah. The well, because I don't know how people are going to receive it. So it, it's that – it's it's – Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna express my myself here, um, oh. because like, <laughs> like I because I I genuinely sure. and, and maybe this sounds wrong, but like if I'm asking a question, I part of me really doesn't care if it offends the person if if I don't feel like the way I asked it or what I'm asking is offensive, right? Like if I ask you the time, and you thought I should have asked you like, do you have a watch on first? Like I'm that's silly. Like I need to know what the time is, so I'm gonna ask you the time. If you're offended by that, you're offended. I'm sorry, but like in at at work, for example, like I won't just step in and give my opinion or directly ask a thing unless I know that my opinion is desired, mm-hmm. right? Because then, because once it is, and I'm, I'm given permission, like no, be ask questions, push back, let's try to get new ideas out there. Then, like, okay, I can do that, but I tend to default to like, no, I'll just be playing quiet and just wait and sit and like I'll listen, and then if you ask me a question, I'll answer. But I have to be per- given permission by like phrases like push back on this if you disagree. Like let me know what you really think. Like things like that. Like okay, I can do that. Mm-hmm. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Because like I – and I've seen like meeting to meeting. Like if I'm with meetings with new people, like I'm not the same person as I am with Interesting. normal. 
unless I've been told prior to that, be how you usually are. Okay. Does that make, does that make sense? I feel very, I feel like a, a child actually half the time. Like, how do I function in these meetings? But unless I, I know it's like a social worky type meeting where like someone's going to yell at me and I need to figure out like, what's the, like, what's the win here? Uh-huh. How do we get you to a win? Yeah. So I can, I can manage you as well. do, you do very good, like social working jujitsu. Yes. yes. It's like you've, it's like you've done that for a long time. Yeah. I, it's interesting because like there are obviously good qualities and negative qualities to each of these cultures, ask culture and guest culture. Like I think the point of, of this, this video, but also like our conversation is to share that there's good that you can learn from each of them. So mm-hmm. to your point that like, I have this inclination to just come and like share what I think and ask directly for, you know, what I want or what I think should happen. But sometimes I need to like check the scene. So for you, it's more of like, I'm going to do it from the background instead of slowly come like entering and um, I don't want to say schmoozing, but like, like I'm more of a small talker and that helps me to like get to know people a little bit better Mm -hmm. and you'd rather observe. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather like engage in meaningless questions back and forth that you feel like that was such a waste of time. But for me, I feel like I've learned something here. Yeah. It also, it builds rapport. It's not a waste of time. I just don't (laughs) like it. No, scratch it. I hate it. You really do. I hate it. It's but okay. like I but it's worth doing and I I do it if I have to. But like that's that's where I like that you and I aren't of the same culture. Mm-hmm. Like we don't we're but you're you're a guesser, I'm an asker. Um and also I'm an introvert, you're an extrovert. And I feel like that plays well well, see, it plays well now in our marriage. Mm-hmm. Initially it was just like a disaster. But when we learned this these terms for the first time, we were like Oh my goodness, that's why you do the things mm-hmm. that you do that bother me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like so it helped us to kind of understand where the other person was coming from that we couldn't articulate because there were so many times where you would ask or say something. The biggest question that would elicit shame for me would you would be like, "Why did you do blank?" Oh my gosh. And I'd be like, Oh my goodness. And I'd feel so much shame in what I did and feel like that was the most confusing thing in my life. Explain so much. And for you, you were literally just asking me, why did you do it? So I can hear your explanation. But I just felt so much was laced into that question. Like so like, much emotion. I'm so and- happy where we are in our marriage now. So I it so and a part of it is also so like it's there's it's twofold because one, it is that I I'm asked culture, so like I will directly ask a thing to know. But also, I, you know this more now, um, listeners and Monica, but like with ADHD, I may have other stuff too, but like I also don't, like there's things I know and there's things like socially that like I don't have not picked up on. I don't naturally pick up on. Like I'd like to know like why do people do X, Y, Z? Because it doesn't make sense to me. So like you, I, all I did was ask you on Sunday, like, oh, why are you wearing stockings? Mm-hmm. Right. And I just wanted to know like, well, why are you wearing that? And I feel like that would have been a question that would have been to be like, like, do you not like it? Does it look, do, do, I, do I not look okay? And all yeah. these things. I was like, because it's cold. Yes. <laughs> yes. And that's all I wanted to know. Cause I was like, you don't always wear them. You're wearing them today. Why are you wearing them? And it wasn't, it was not a critique of your outfit. There's, right. it's, but I, just I used want to, to know receive why. it that yeah, way. It's so. Yep. That was wrong. <laughs> so I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but now. I'm sure the way I've said it was also probably not. Again, the foundation of love is more established now. Like you get that. Like I'm not going to just critique an outfit as we're trying to get out the door. Like I'm saying, Hey, I want to know why you were, but like, and I'll be like, why'd you say this? Yeah. And mm-hmm. I remember asking you stuff like that. And you'd be like, I feel like you're trying to catch me. You used to yes. say that all the time. I feel like you're trying to catch me. Cause you so didn't I like what I, were. cause I didn't like, cause you didn't like what I did. So my explanation, you wanted to like prove my explanation was wrong so that you could tell me why and what I did Mm -hmm. was wrong. But now after learning this, that more often than that is that you just really want to actually understand why. And so you just asked really directly. Mm -hmm. So this, I feel like these concepts helped us a lot. And for you, you're like, Oh, because you're trying to come to a like deeper understanding before Mm -hmm. you make a conclusion or before you say the thing or ask the thing. 
Well, I, I do also embrace that the way you naturally are is a lot more personable and likable. And like just will is better with people. Like I, and you, that's like in order for society to progress <laughs> and for people to like our podcast, like it needs to be like, you, you have to be a person like you. Like, I just get that. I just, <laughs> I just get it. So like, I, it's not like I look at you and I'm like, oh, she, I wish she wasn't the way she was. I'm like, no, I'm so happy she's this way mm-hmm. because it's better. Like it's better for the kids. It's just, it's just, it's just all better. better what are the, the terms that? Um, Jordan Peterson sometimes uses agreeable and disagreeable. Yes, agreeable and disagreeable, which is like a different. It's concept. not the same, but it's- I'm so disagreeable. But like, we could do we could do his um personality test too. Oh, we should do that. But like, yes, because you're more agreeable than I am, which isn't always a good thing. But- no, well, that goes into like the codependency thing. There's just so much less into this because like, I wonder. Because I think it's important for us if we consider like if you're considering like what culture are you from or you ask or you guess. Um, I think there's like there's good to knowing that, but then also I feel like there's dysfunctions around it. Yeah. That aren't yeah. aren't the culture itself. Like that's a dysfunction of it. So like your codependency is not because you're a guesser. Like a codependency isn't a good thing. Yes. Whereas like you being guest culture isn't a bad thing. Right. Right. So like I feel right. like that's a Yes, I love that word, like dysfunctions within these two different cultures. Because yeah, we're not pinning them against each other. Of w- which one's going to be the better one? Mm-hmm. It's just kind of more your tendency. But then, do you tend too far in one direction, mm-hmm. or like, is your reason why for being this way? Does that need some healing or right. reordering? Um, you know, could you need to work on your tone in your ask cultureness? So like. That in itself isn't a big deal, but your maybe your timing or your tone are are off, or sometimes you just need to get to the point, you guessers, you know, and mm-hmm. and things like that. So right, and then I think so. Yeah, I think evaluating where you're, what kind of culture you're at, and then what kind of culture your spouse is, and then I think so. Like, how would you say we go about the conversation though? So, like, say once we realized, I don't even remember what we did, but like once you realize what culture you are, how do we go about bridging the gap so that we're not because we may even be the same culture. Um, to making sure that we are communicating in a way that's effective Mm -hmm. within our marriage. Cause I feel like that's the, that's the hard part is like, okay, I could know I'm a asker and then I could feel like I'm still going to ask regardless of how you feel. And I feel like at some, there must've been a point where I had to dull that back. Uh So I wasn't constantly hurting your feelings. But I think the first part, at, at least in my opinion, the first part came in acknowledging that we were different and that that was okay. And that like there were strengths to, the other person's way of being Mm. or even like, okay, let's say we're the same, but like that there's strengths to that. And acknowledging that I think was helpful for me because then it didn't seem like a slight directed against me or towards me, but that it was like, this is kind of your baseline. Mm. So you're not directing this at me. That this is it's not because I'm how, angry. It's not because of yeah, right, right. This right. is how you communicate, and so um, I'm going to like I'm going to reframe how I'm receiving the way that you're communicating mm-hmm. with me. Um, then from there, I think that there were times where we would call each other out on that, like you're being really ass culture. I remember us using the terms a lot more often. Mm when we first learned this and like you're being really ass culture and it's kind of overwhelming me right now. Or you're like, you're being too guest culture and you're not getting to the point. I need, I need to know what you mean, you know? And like, mm. I feel like there were times where we I just got to make sure to emphasize the K ask culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So don't be rude. It's not even <laughs> helpful for marriage. They blend sometimes. Um, yeah. I think those were some of the, our first steps. What mm. about you? What do you think? I don't remember. Okay. Out well, of how sight, about, out of how mind. How about now? Out of sight. How about now? How do you think that we use these to communicate effectively? Well, I feel like you're, truthfully, I feel like you're a ton more patient when I just ask you things. And I don't feel like there's as much, I feel like you are very good now at reading like, am I, am I asking because I'm upset or I'm asking because I want to know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't know that there were two options before this. Mm-hmm. But even like, I think, I don't, I don't know me. <laughs> I, I don't know. Sorry. I don't know if this is like an ask culture thing or not, but like I ask with a K. Um, I don't know if this is, but like, I know that there's times when we, even if we're in an argument, 
or disagreement when you're taking minutes. I've, if I say a thing of how I feel, like I feel like there's no other hidden emotion behind it. Mm-hmm. And I, so I get over it very quickly. Yes. And I feel like that's even a thing you, you've learned to like, oh, he's done. Yes. Like I'm, and then, cause I even, there's been, <laughs> I don't know what we were doing lot, like last time we argued and you were like, any, like, I, you didn't ask me like anything else, but it sounded like one of those, like, like, are you anything else to art? Like anything else you want to say? I'm like, no, I'm done. <laughs> All set. <laughs> I was like, no, that's it. Off my chest. I was like, um, okay, good. Which I think is like, I, but again, I don't, that's, that's the way I am. And I think you've learned to like, mm-hmm. that's just the way he is. Um, yeah. And then, but also, I've also learned though that I can't be guest culture, but I can also, but I can keep my mouth shut. So like, if there's a time where like, if I were to be direct right now, it's not helpful for anyone. Mm-hmm. I just need to be quiet. I've learned to just be quiet instead of just, cause like, I know like you, you voiced in like, what am I supposed to do about that right now? Like there's yeah. times and situations where like bringing up this thing is not helpful for anyone. Yep. Why are you bringing it up? Or kind, right? Like helpful yes, or kind. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think, cause your point might be true, but it, again, it doesn't help the conversation or it might, like it might hurt somebody's feelings to bring it up at this point in mm-hmm. time because it's not necessarily relevant, even if it's true. It's just kind of a dig at somebody mm-hmm. else. Oh, wait, wait, one more thing. I've also, I think we've also allowed, I don't know, allowed is not the right word. Like with, with the things that we work on together, I think you end up being the point person for a lot of them because I think you're better at communicating with people. And and just like in building rapport as you communicate. Does that make sense? Mm. Like I think in my, especially at work, like I can be quick and direct and back and forth and like we can get things done. Mm. Efficient. But without building a team mm. mentality, right? Without without actually building something together. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think for a lot of the things that we do, so like social media, like for example, like even just for To Become Family and, and the podcast, like you do social media, you do the email correspondences correspondences, um, and other projects that we're doing. Like you, you're the person that does it and- I'm more than happy to like, oh no, Monica's, I know you're so much better at this than me. And it's not because like, it doesn't matter to me, but because I know that you have the correct culture for that. Mm. Does that make sense? Like mm-hmm. you can build a good culture here. Um, so I, I've been able to identify it as like, this is a strength for certain mm-hmm. things that like, I, I know the way I am is actually a detriment. Mm. So. And I think you've become more patient in when I'm doing those things mm-hmm. and like allowing that to happen. And I think I've learned from you and ask culture people that like clear is kind. So there are times where just clarity is, is the most important thing here. And that it's better to just say the thing, even if you feel uncomfortable, um, even if the other person might feel uncomfortable, at least now we know like where we're at. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I feel like I've tried to adapt some of that depending on the situation, but like trying to implement that more appropriately. For sure. So there's, there, I'm not going to play the whole video tonight. Um, it's a 15 minute video. I'm going to put it in the show notes. I really think you should, you should go back and Highly recommend watch watching the whole, the whole thing. thing. Yeah. Um, watch the whole thing. I would watch the whole thing with your spouse as well. Mm-hmm. Um, because this is, this is, I think this would be like a great pre cana workshop thing mm-hmm. because like going into marriage, knowing the differences is huge. Um, and then starting to, the conversation early of like, what can we do to make sure that we are communicating well? Cause everyone says like, Oh, communicating communication skills, active listening. Like that's, I think that's pointless. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've once, that's once helped us. I used to do that to you. Yeah. And like repeat back to you what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> and not listen to the thing you said, <laughs> but I was able to repeat back, but like, yes. So yeah. I feel like this, this helped us so much more in communicating as spouses. And I think it just, yeah, it allowed us to act, to communicate more freely within our our cultures, within our styles, but also realize that there are strengths that the other person, like sometimes it irritates us, Mm -hmm. but sometimes it's actually better. So to like be able to like learn and adapt how to communicate differently and also receive information differently, like reframe how we receive. So I think it's helpful. I don't, I don't love like labeling things all the time, but I do like having common terms that we can refer to so that in times of conflict, we can be like, Hey, I think this is because of Mm -hmm. our, our differences in ass culture and guest culture. And where can we find something in the middle? Yes. 
I like it. I support it. Um, so I'm going to link it in the show notes and go ahead and listen to it after you watch listen to this episode and share mm-hmm. this with your spouse. Um, and then we'll maybe, let's do another poll. Are you ask culture or guest culture? We'll see. Okay. Well, okay. Oh, oh, I thought you were asking me how yeah. I was asking the question. I was like, well, no, I want to no. tell you what to do. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I was overthinking. I was assuming that's what you meant the poll to be. Yes, it is. <laughs> but I didn't want to just tell you because I've let, like, that is your thing. Like, you're doing the social, so I don't want to Thank just you. tell you. Because that's rude. Because I recognize myself. <laughs> Well, I'm going to be really clear and direct and say, I hope we see you at the next episode. <laughs>